Hey everyone, Burning Crusade is an expansion highly driven by content, and it has some quite amazing content to offer. However, I would say that TBC, more than any other expansion, is quickly done and solved. Once you have or close to having your full BIS gear, or full PvP gear, which are both quite fast to obtain as opposed to classic WoW, you'll find yourself out of content to do and quickly bored. Thankfully, this is World of Warcraft, and there's a ton of other fun and unconventional activities you could be doing to add some life to the game and its content. Obviously, most of these things just reward cosmetic and fun items, so they will not affect your character power. But you may discover something here that you didn't know you wanted until you see it. So today, we're gonna go over 6 fun things you did not know you wanted to do in Classic TBC. So without further ado, let's get into the video. One of the things I like to do when I'm bored in Classic TBC is doing a full run of Stratom on Dead side for the infamous Rivendare Death Charger from the last boss, one of the coolest ground mounts in the game currently. Now here's the thing about Stratom, pretty much everything is easy here except the last two bosses. They are quite tough if you don't have some decent gear. Also I did it as a hunter and it was decently easy, but I'm not sure every class could do this. You'll have to try for yourself. Another really important thing to know is that once you kill the last abomination outside the last boss's room, you need to quickly enter the door and engage the first to last boss. Otherwise, if you stay outside, there's going to be a million undead skeletons spawning that will destroy you in seconds. So for this reason, make sure you're full health or mana before you engage the last abomination. Also, make sure to kill Ramstein at the bottom of the stairs and not at the top. The reason for this is because there's gonna be 5 death knights spawning at the top of the stairs right after Rammstein is dead and you don't want to engage them with low health and mana. So just hide behind the wall where they spawn, drink and eat up and then kill them. Once they're dead, the door to the last boss should open, allowing you to kill Riven there for his coveted mount. Good luck. Here's one thing you probably forgot about, the Stranglethorn Fishing Extravaganza. For those who don't know what this is, this is a fishing contest held every Sunday from 1400 to 1600 in Booty Bay. The goal is simple, collect 40 speckled tasty fish from the pools of tasty fish that only appear once this event starts, and be the first one to turn them to wriggle bass bait in Booty Bay. Then even after a winner is declared, you can still turn in some rare fish for additional rewards or more speckled tasty fish for a bit of gold. Those are the rewards you can get from this event. As you can see, most of them are fishing related. But the one that's the most useful in my opinion is the hook of the master angler. There's many places in Outland where you have to swim and this trinket will be very nice to have to that end. Now, the thing with this contest is that your chances of winning are completely dependent on who else is competing with you on your particular server. The more players there is, the tougher it gets to win. So to maximize your chances of winning, here are some small tricks you can apply. First, always try to avoid fishing where other players are. And even more important, avoid fishing a pool that another player is fishing in. Also, make sure to put your Hearthstone at Booty Bay in. That way, you won't have to run all the way to the quest giver wasting precious minutes. Pool models are deceptive. Sometimes it may look like the hook is inside the pool when it's not. So try to recast your line until you're certain that your floater is in the pool of tasty fish. There's a lot of other tips you should know about. So I'll link a video to Ecosial, a content creator who knows way more about this contest than I do, and you should be able to learn way more from him. Good luck on winning the first place prize. Another fun thing you could do when bored is the PvP events around Outland. You'll find these in all of Hellfire Peninsula, Zengar Marsh, Terracar Forest and the Grand. The goal of each one of them is to capture a given structure, but the means you achieve that are different. In Hellfire Peninsula, you'll have to capture 3 towers by staying in proximity and waiting until the bar fills up. The more players there is, the faster this process will be. Capturing all 3 towers will give everyone from your your faction the buff Hellfire superiority, as long as they stay in Hellfire Peninsula of course. 
In Zangar Marsh, you'll have to capture two beacons by staying close to them, similar to how it works in Hellfire Peninsula. Once both beacons are captured by your faction, you'll then have to capture the center tower, and this will buff everyone in your faction with the Twin Spire's blessing, and also give everyone in your faction a new graveyard, closer to the Coilfang dungeons and raid. In Terakar Forest, you can capture 5 towers around Akindun. Once all towers are controlled by your faction, everyone in Terakar will receive the buff Blessing of Akindun and be able to loot spirit shards from bosses in any dungeon inside Akindun. Those spirit shards can be turned in at your Terakar Forest hub for some useful rewards. Finally, Nagrand offers the Battle for Hala. This is a bigger endeavor than the other three, in the sense that it takes more time and there's slightly more objectives. First, if the opposite faction controls Hala, you'll have to kill a bunch of guards with a ton of HP. To do that, you'll be offered fire bombs and you'll be able to fly wyverns placed around Hala to bomb the guards from above. Once all the guards are dead, you can finally start capturing the town itself. It takes a very long time compared to other PvP towers, and you'll definitely need other players to help you to do this faster. But after you capture the town, that's it. A bunch of NPCs and vendors will appear, and you'll be able to buy some quite decent items from here, especially useful while leveling. PvP events are a super fun part of TBC that was unfortunately mostly abandoned after this expansion. I've always liked capturing those PvP objectives whenever I was bored in retail throughout the years, and I find myself still doing this from time to time in classic TBC when I'm bored. It's always fun to give a lesson to some poor guy that was leveling and thought he or she could capture these with impunity. And well, it's actually quite useful now to do in classic TBC with the buffs and the rewards. Moving on, something I always love to do is the holiday event. Currently, as of the time of writing this video, for example, the Midsummer Fire Festival is up. But WoW offers a ton of different holiday events. Lunar Festival, Hallow's End, Love is in the Air, Pirate's Day, Children's Week, you name it. I always love doing those events whenever they're up, and it's something you should try too if you've never done them. Obviously, in TBC the events are way more bare bones than they are on retail, but you can still obtain some crazy good rewards from them. Did you know, for example, that the Headless Horseman mount was added in TBC? It was added at the very end in one of the last patches, and since Classic TBC is based on the last patch of the game, it's very likely that we will get to obtain it too. But every event has some sort of fun cosmetic item to get. I talked about the Midsummer Fire Festival which is currently up earlier, and one of the most fun items you can obtain from that is the Brazier of the Dancing Flames. It's a super fun cosmetic item that you get to keep, but you'll only have the couple weeks that this event is up to obtain it. Another mount you can obtain from those events is the Brewfest Kodo and the Brewfest Ram. Not 100% confirmed whether the Kodo will be obtainable in Classic TBC, but according to Wowhead, it was added in patch 2. 2.4.3, which is the patch Classic TBC is based on, so I have some hopes. Good luck on obtaining those. Another thing you could do if you're bored is prepare for the introduction of achievements in Wrath of the Lich King Classic. Classic Wrath is pretty much a certainty, and one of the best things Wrath will bring is the achievement system. And being a completionist and obtaining all the achievements in Wrath was actually something doable, unlike the craziness that the achievements are nowadays in retail. So anyways, one thing you could do is prepare some of those in advance if you're looking to complete everything. You could do the weapon skills achievement in advance, for example, which used to ask players to get all their weapon skills to level 400. Obviously, you can only get to 375 in TBC, but you'll be 90% of the way there at least. Or leveling your cooking, fishing, and first aid to max level. Or, if you're actually insane, you could prepare for the insane in the main brain achievement in advance. So every part of this achievement is doable right now in classic TBC, so it actually doesn't matter if you start now or later. Except for the fact that without the achievement system in the game, the game will have no way of knowing whether you reached Honored with Bloodsail Buccaneer and Exalted with all the Steam Weedle Cartel factions at some point. 
Meaning that if you want to completely do this in TBC and obtain the title the moment Threat of the Lich King drops, you'll have to be both honored with Blood Cell Buccaneers and exalted with Steam Weedle Cartel simultaneously. The only way to do this is to kill an absolutely ridiculous amount of Waste Wanderer mobs in Tenaris that give one rep at a time with Steel Weedle Cartel. So you'll have to reach honored with Blood Cell, meaning you'll be hated with Steam Weedle then grind from hated to exalted, killing only mobs that give one rep at a time. Yeah, good luck to anyone who wants to try this ridiculous insane feat. But yeah, farming achievements in advance is a really nice way to pass time if you're bored with classic TBC. Not all of them can be done in advance, but quite a few of them can. If you're gonna do this, don't look at Wowhead, as that shows retail achievements, which are way different from Wrath. Instead, look at some Wrath of the Lich King database website to have something more accurate and determine whether a given achievement is doable from now or not. Finally, a really fun thing to do currently in TBC is to grab all the fun items that the game has to offer. There's a ton of items to obtain from both Classic and TBC scattered all around the world. We made a video about 8 of them in the channel a while back that you should definitely check if you're like me a fan of those fun and cosmetic items. But yeah, Classic TBC adds a lot of really fun hidden items that you probably didn't know existed or forgot about. I talked about the Brazier of the Dancing Flames earlier. You also have Mr. Pinchy, the Orb of the Sindore, Time Lost Figurine, and much more. Then you also have items from Classic, like the Piccolo of the Flaming Fire or the Orb of Deception. And the best part about this is a lot of these Classic items are now easily soloable, as I showed you for Stratholme earlier. And that's all I have for today. I hope this list will help you have more reasons to log in and play the game every day. I personally am farming the Revendare mount whenever I have nothing else to do in the game. And whenever I'm bored of that, I just go around and collect some fun cosmetic items to have fun with. But yeah, I hope you found this video interesting or entertaining. If you did, remember to give it a like and subscribe to the Classic WoW Curios channel for more content like this. As always, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.